I was asked this uh, lovely question on, uh, I, think, I think it's lesson, uh, question, uh, lesson 37 of A Course in Miracles, My Holiness Blesses the World. So my holiness blesses the world and ambition and feeling happy when one seems to be inspired by one's ambition and how you marry the two. Well, I'll just quickly talk on my ho holiness blesses the world. <coughs> well, if I'm in separation, I mean, if I can talk about my teacher, Dr. Hawkins, and the levels of consciousness. So if I'm in the levels of separation, i.e. I'm not in oneness, I'm not in the infinite, I'm not in the eternal, I'm not in the observer. If I'm in these levels of separation, then the light which can come through me and the inspiration that can come through me is, is limited by the, the filters of the limited self, the ego self, or the programming uh, that creates separation, those identification with those limited thoughts in the body. So that the light and the inspiration then sort of transmute through, uh, but it's slightly muddied by the level of separation from being in, in, in holiness. So to be in holiness for me is that there's no separation in the now. There's no feeling, there's no identification with the body or the baggage of the ego, the belief systems. So there, there's the oneness because identification with separation has evaporated. And now it's like one is an instrument of the, of the oneness, of the holiness of the, uh, of the uh, absence of separation. So out of that, whatever is orchestrated out of the, shall we say, out of the infinite. So one is now just uh, an, an empty instrument, if you like, for speaking and doing, or actions that arise out of the infinite. And when one is uh, coming out of those high levels of, of uh, consciousness, then, you know, the, the, what seems to appear in the world is orchestrated from that, from that level of light and inspiration and that level of love. Now, uh, just on a practical point of view, one knows that when one, you know, one, as one gets higher into alignment, with things um, that, you know, uh, on a, you probably start, you know, there's a, the feelings of spiritual bliss, joy, uh, oneness, um, you know, the transmission of infinite love, uh, healing, and uh, messages that inspire, um, you know, oneness and healing and wholeness uh, away from the, uh, identification and the fears of being a body or all the limited programs that one has been programmed by and is holding in the limited mind or the ego. So, uh, but on a practical note, you know, this, um, if someone has felt like, oh, I was really inspired when I was in these long-term projects or when I was doing these things and I don't feel that, that can actually be something um, which is very understandable. If you're doing a lot of spiritual work, it can seem like there's feelings of boredom, not, not being inspired, uh, feelings of wanting to do something exciting. This is just par for the course with advanced uh, spiritual work because you're starving the ego of its more limited programs, which, it, which, it, which was orchestrating your function. Like, I'll give you an example. When I was in the stock market, I thought that being um, managing director of Goldman Sachs would make me happy. So I thought, if you'd asked me at that level of consciousness, I thought as I was, you know, doing all these qualifications and working in the stock market and trying to get into Goldman Sachs, that I'd be happy. And, you could, and if you'd asked me, am I inspired and happy and doing what I really want to do? I'd have probably said yes, even though there was deep conflict internally and, and deep, uh, uh, deep, uh, deep resentment and, and anger and frustration because I was wanting to get there so I could be happy. And I wasn't really that happy, even though I might have thought so. So these, um, what seems to be inspiration changes. And as you do, um, as you do uh, spiritual work, as you're going to more advanced levels, you're letting go of addictive drives and programs. Like one day when I get this degree or I get this qualification or I'm finally doing this job, then I'll be happy. You know, and, and it seems to give an inspiration or it seems to, you seems to feel happy because you think you'll get happiness at the end of achieving that or doing that role. Um, as you get, also as you're going to higher levels of consciousness, um, there can be a lot of boredom or frustration or upset or grief that things that you thought would make you happy aren't making you happy. 
and um, there can be a need, you know, and a wantingness for some, some, something which is non-addictive and inspiring. And um, so what I would do if there is, um, you know, to resolve any kind of duality with my holiness blesses the world and also inspiration, is you want, you know, you can pray to the Holy Spirit if you feel that the right job or the right role or the right qualification is in the done, just pray to the Holy Spirit that uh, uh, to see the, this conflict in truth or pray to the Holy Spirit for, for guidance into what is the Holy Spirit's role for you that will inspire you at the level of high spirit or high love. Um, so generally speaking, when you're doing things of high love, there you, you awaken the Kundalini. So there's a feeling of great spiritual joy. I mean, in my own experience, when I'm helping others, helping others to get out of food addiction or out of addiction or just trying to help others getting out of the suffering of their own thinking and feelings. There's a feeling of uh, spiritual passion or joy. Um, in t also, this can bring up conflict in this particular world in terms of money and finances. I would say with that, again, it's the, the main thing is, uh, you know, you resolve that through, through prayer and just speaking to mentors. Uh, if there's a conflict like, oh, I, I feel very happy doing this kind of work, but I don't know if it pays enough money to, to keep the rent. So then my own way of uh, dealing with that, if there's fear or anger or worry with, uh, with finances, is just to resolve those, either through cancelling beliefs or the Course of Miracle lessons or sitting with feelings or the letting go process of Hawkins or the observer acts of dissolving the fear and remember that you are sustained by the love of God, meaning that it's your level of consciousness that sustains you. So when you hold fear and doubt and frustration around, say, for example, career, money, and inspiration, if you dissolve that, your level of consciousness, the buoyancy of light through you will shine. And, it, and that buoyancy will just bring work and inspiration uh, to you. Ultimately, for me, this idea that money and career is the thing that sustains you is a very strong belief within the collective. However, you know my own experience and watching the watching enlightened teachers is that actually um, at high levels of consciousness, uh, they do what they seem to find joyful, and money and accommodation seems to appear. But that's very advanced. But in the, practically speaking, uh, from my own experience, if you dissolve the fear and anxiety and frustrations or boredom or frustration uh, within, within you, um, it usually always does work out. In my experience, it's, it's the level of consciousness. The more spiritually happy you are, uh, the more things just seem to flow and things come to you, whether it be financial, whatever. Now, there can be a lot of work uh, to do, clearing belief systems and clearing out feelings, but generally, um, uh, it's, it's worth it. Another thing to say on work and, and um, is that you just dissolve any conflicts you have. Like uh, if there's a conflict, you should be doing something inspiring. Uh, dissolve that and just keep praying. Um, uh, I'll give you an example from my life. Uh, I remember um, finally thinking that um, I need to work. And I was doing a lot of clearing around fear and lots of energies. And then suddenly my father said, hey, you can work in the B&B, &B. go work there. And so that seemed to be the answer. God got me work through my father. So it just happens in that way. Okay, so I'll stop.